continue on this aspect of just uh, considering some of the basics that God wants us to be involved in. And uh, sometimes uh, I think, you know, we get to uh, thoughts and ideas of be- being back to the basics. Uh, we immediately, oh, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's less than what I really need to be focused on right now. I am, I am more mature uh, than that kind of study. Pastor, that's something that you ought to be teaching uh, to the children's uh, uh, small group class, you know, or that kind of mindset. And, and yet the, the reality of it is, is sometimes we uh, get things so complicated in our minds, we forget the simple things. And uh, we want to get back to those uh, because, why? Be, they're so critical for uh, our spiritual growth. They're so critical for our right relationship with God. And uh, I thought about it in this sense. You know, when I choose not to get into the Word of God, I choose not to let the Lord communicate with me. Now, we don't look at it that way. We don't uh, think of it in that way, do we? Uh, I've never really thought, you know, Lord, please don't speak to me. Uh, If anything, I've thought very often, Lord, I need you to speak to me. Lord, write it in the sky. Lord, send me an email or text or uh, leave me a voicemail if if need be. You know, something. I need you, Lord, to speak to me. And uh, then all along, if, if, if you get into that uh, aspect that we neglect to get into this book, it's almost as if we're trying to say, uh, Lord, I don't want to listen to you. Uh, I, I don't want to hear from you. And, and we want to get out of uh, that practice and into the practice of consistently, Lord, I want to communicate with you today. And in our communication, not only do I want to talk to you, but I want you Uh, to talk with me. We've looked at several aspects concerning the Word of God. Uh, We've looked at the idea that God has commanded us to study it, that God's commanded us to uh, read it, to search it, to uh, esteem it, to to make it so that it's a priority in our life, to value it. Uh, We've looked at the different aspects that uh, uh, the Scriptures compare uh, itself to as far as uh, ways that we can see uh, what the Word of God does uh, in our life even today. The fact that it's a sword, that it's a mirror, that it's milk and meat, it's a light and a, a lamp, it's fire and a hammer. Uh, And it's also likened unto gold and the honeycomb. In fact, let's take our Bibles this morning and let's go to the book of Psalm chapter 19. Psalm chapter 19. And let's look here at a couple of the scriptures uh, uh, that uh, sound similar to uh, some of the things we looked at last week. uh, As we just uh, kind of drive home uh, that that mindset, uh, drive home Uh, that necessary belief uh, that the Word of God truly is uh, of great value and has a very uh, positive impact upon our lives. Brother Larry? You know, not wanting to have communication from the Lord seems to be the opposite of being a sinner. Yes. because they have not hearkened unto my words, mm-hmm. nor to my law, but rejected it. The people are rejecting it and refusing to listen to God. Yeah. And, and God does not, not just turn a blind eye to that. He, he will respond, mm-hmm. as he says here in, in the book of Jeremiah. Yes, exactly. And sometimes I think we look at that and we say, well, that's the extreme. That's when you hear something from the scriptures and you say, oh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, When you look at it and it says, you know, uh, whatever the command that specifically uh, the Lord gives to you and you say, oh, I don't like that command. Therefore, I'm not going to do that. I've rejected the word of God. But very seldom do we look at it and simply see, well, by not opening it, by not getting into it, by not having prioritizing that study time, that's kind of the same thing as rejecting it. Now, it's obviously not with the same intent uh, 
uh, but uh, same result. And so we want to be so careful that, that we, we, we really truly allow the Lord's conviction to work within our heart to bring us to that resolve that I will study the Word of God. And, and if it's His will for us, He's going to enable us to do so, right? And uh, as He enables us to do so, and as we prioritize it, and as we get into it, then the Lord speaks to us and it will allow us to be able uh, to grow. Now it says here in Psalm chapter 19, in verse 7, look what the uh, 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 scriptures uh, read for us. The law of the Lord is perfect. Perfect. Uh, we don't have a lot of perfect things out there right now. Uh, we don't have a lot of things that are completely trustworthy. Uh, how many of you uh, listen or uh, the, to the news or read a, 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 an article on something and you, uh, in the back of your mind, you're going, I wonder if that's really how it happened. I wonder if that's really true. Now, some of you say, I don't do that. You should be doing that. <laughs> uh, that's uh, the, the reality of the things that the information that is being processed and put out there. Uh, there's always uh, some kind of skew to it. And very, very, very seldom do you get the whole facts and the whole truth and uh, nothing but the truth, nothing but the facts. Uh, but when it comes to the Word of God, it is perfect. It is complete. Everything that it says is true. Everything it says is right. And, and, and we have to, <clears throat> again, uh, allow that conviction to become something that we base our actions upon. The fact that God's word is perfect. Now, because it's perfect, it then has the power to do what? Well, it says there, converting the soul. Converting the soul. Now, we, we think of the word often in conversion uh, or converting. We think of that in regards to our salvation, right? Uh, when we talk about I was saved, we sometimes will say I was converted. I was converted to Christianity, uh, I, I went from being lost to being saved. And that process had to do uh, with uh, uh, the process of converting. But, you know, it, it, this also, I think, has more to do with than just salvation. We know that the scriptures are, uh, make us wise unto salvation. We know the scriptures speak of Christ. They, pr they show us and, and teach us the way of salvation. Uh, they lead us to that salvation, but there's also the converting of the soul, the soul. And we, when we say the word soul, uh, I think the easiest way to define it is made up of those three parts, the mind, the will, and the emotions. The mind, the will, and the emotions. And, and we've spoken about that often here when we talk about the way that God has made us and we talk about uh, those parts and how they need to be in balance and how they need to be spirit controlled. Uh, but every, all three of those parts make up our soul. All three of those parts are intricate parts of our life. Our, our emotions we experience on sometimes a moment by moment basis. Uh, and those emotions can change, right? They can change with the cloud in the sky. They can change with just a, 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 a temperature change. <laughs> so my emotions change, you know. Uh, there, there's a lot of change that happens in emotion, but emotion is part of life. Uh, and I'm glad it's a part of life. Somebody called it the spice of life. It's what makes it interesting. Uh, when I feel joy, uh, when I feel excitement, when I feel these, uh, the happiness, when, when my emotions uh, uh, have a certain part uh, that causes me to be able uh, to sometimes enjoy life, right? Now, what is the scriptures good for? Because the law of God is perfect, it converts my emotions. Now, why does my emotions need to be converted? Because sometimes my emotions get out of balance. Sometimes my emotions are incorrect. Sometimes my emotions uh, uh, need to be brought back into uh, um, the authority of the scriptures. And you say, well, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't know exactly how. Have you ever, well, I shouldn't say have you. I know you probably have, uh, but let me use Larry as an example. Brother Larry talks often about uh, being discouraged or getting depressed, right? And we know what does he do when he's right with God in response to that? He reads the Psalms, right? We know that about you, brother. That's something that we know because you've helped tell us and explained it. We know that he goes to the book of Psalms. Now, what does the book of Psalms do? 
Okay, it encourages, it uplifts, it comforts. It helps to change something with inside of me. It converts my emotions. And what does it convert it to? It converts it to the right thing. It converts it to what God wants me to feel. And so uh, here again, if I'm having emotional needs in my life, uh, what is the perfect source to go to? The scriptures. The scriptures. Go to them. Read them. Uh, let Allow God to communicate with you regarding uh, your emotions. Allow him to convert your emotions. But then also part of the soul is uh, the mind. The mind. Now, what do we think of when we think of the mind? Well, that's just it. We think, right? Because the mind has to do with our thoughts. And so, yes, we can say the mind is the brain. It's that mechanism that, that, that processes all the information. But mind is a little bit more than just the brain. It includes the brain as far as that thinking component. But it's the thoughts that we actually develop, the thoughts that we actually have. Now, let me ask you this week, did you have, did every thought that you have, do you believe it was of God? Do you believe it was a biblical thought process? Do you believe it was a uh, just a perfect thought? You know, it, it, no. We all have had thoughts have, that have entered into our mind, even this week, that we've had to renounce, that we've had to practice the scriptural principle of capturing them, of casting them down, and then of correcting them, Right? And where does that happen? Where does that occur? It occurs by the power of the Word of God. Because the law of God is perfect. And it converts my mind. It converts my thinking. Too many times that uh, it, it's, it's happened to me. I had a thought and thinking about it and, and starting to act upon it. Go to the scriptures to sort of correlate. Is this thought correctly? Is this a correct thought? Is this a, a worldly thought? Is this a fleshly thought? Uh, and, and the Bible will help adjust my thinking so that I am thinking correctly. And then what results is my actions. My actions then follow suit with that correct thinking. You know, today we are in a world of information. It is all around us. It is at our fingertips. And if it's not at our fingertips, it's at the, the tongue tip of the tip of the tongue of someone else that's next to us, Right. Oh, have you heard? Did you know uh, this and this and this and that? Right. And we're just inundated with all of this information. And what happens? That information causes us to think a certain way, doesn't it? It causes us to develop uh, uh, maybe a belief system or uh, conclusions regarding certain scenarios, certain uh, um Whatever it is that we, we run into life, because there's so many things that, that, uh, that we had developed thoughts about. And when we develop those thoughts, then we act upon those thoughts. And when we act upon those thoughts, there is a, a visible result that came based on an invisible thought. This, so it goes back to this mindset here that I need God's word to infiltrate my thinking and convert it to the right kind of thinking. And when we get into the scriptures and we find those principles, then it helps change my thoughts. That allows my actions then to be honoring and pleasing uh, to the Lord. Now it says again, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So it converts my emotions, it converts my uh, thinking. And then what's that last part of the soul? My will. My will. So what does it do? It converts my decision making. It converts my resolve. It converts the choices uh, that I am going to uh, carry on into. That's part of your will. Uh, you had a will this morning to come to church. Praise the Lord for that. You had a will to watch online. Praise the Lord for that. You had a, 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 a some of you that are not listening to me had a will to stay in bed. You had a will to uh, not be here. You had a will to do something different than church. And, and listen, you know, I, I know that we can, uh, uh, you know, shame you and, and make you feel bad about all of that. And, and truthfully, I don't want to be the one that does that. I want the Spirit of God to be the one that does it. I want to be the Word of God that does I want the Word of God to be the one that does that. Now, if He uses my voice to do it, then so be it. 
All right, but yeah, you you need conversion. You and I need conversion of our will because too many times we are self-willed. And there's times when I'm self-willed that I don't even think I'm self-willed. I just naturally go and do what I think I should do only to realize, wait a minute, that might have been according to my will and not his will. So what is the key for, for me to coming into line with God's will? is his word being applied to my soul. So it can convert my will. And, and I'm so grateful for uh, that ability that God's word has because that truly gives us uh, that, that true hope that says I can live for the Lord. Because if my soul's converted and I'm thinking correctly and I might, my will is resolved to make the right decisions and follow uh, God's will, not my will, and my uh, emotions are following suit with what the Lord wants them to be, then I know that I have that great opportunity to be able uh, to serve the Lord. But then that letter, the second part of that verse, and, and it's amazing when you uh, take the, the, the scriptures and you unpack them, it's amazing how much you can get out of just one simple phrase. Uh, but it says there, the testimony of the Lord is what? Sure. Now, what is sure? True. What is it? Okay, unmoving, guaranteed. Positive, all right? When you think about this, it's it, if you are sure about something, then you know it. You're positive about it. And, and there's no doubt with it. And you know that it is, it is, it is again, kind of follows suit with that aspect of God's word being perfect. It's sure. It's completely trustworthy. Now, because it is sure, then what does it accomplish? Well, it makes wise the simple. Makes wise the simple. So, how many of you have ever felt simple before? How many feel simple now? You know, I mean, is that, uh, yes, I feel like there are times when I simply don't know the answer. There's times when I feel like I don't have the knowledge. I don't have the wisdom. Now, now, simple is even more than, than just an intellectual understanding, right? Because I've seen a lot of intellectually uh, smart people. Uh, if you want to uh, um, uh, give them the IQ test, they're going to they're gonna, uh, pass in, in flying colors with a lot of numbers behind that IQ, right? Uh, or a high IQ score. And intelligently, uh, they have a lot of information that they know, but they still are simple. Because simple has more uh, uh, to do with what you do with what you know. Simple has more to do with the, the way that you live your life. That's why wisdom, when we look at wisdom, uh, which is the opposite of being simple, wisdom is the application of knowledge. Uh, wisdom is the ability to be able to see life from God's perspective. And that's why, you know, you don't have to be smart to be wise, you think that doesn't really make sense? It does. Because wisdom is in accordance to uh, God's word and God's direction and in God's thinking. And so if we come in, of course, I, I know that the, uh, the, the, the main uh, thought that we have there is God does know everything and God is the most intelligent being there ever is and ever will be. Uh, we have that, that certainly that... that uh, uh, the surety of that, but we know that we have a finite mind. We know that we have limited understanding. Uh, we know that we forget things, right? And one of my dad's famous statements was, I've forgotten more than you've ever known. <laughs> That's what he told me often. <laughs> but here's the reality. Because the word of God, the testimony of the Lord is sure it has the ability to make me wise. Now I can be able to operate in this life knowing his will and accomplishing his will with the wisdom that he gives me. James says that, right, doesn't he? He says, if any of you lack wisdom, what? Let him ask of God. And how's God going to impart that? Well, I believe a lot of the ways that God's going to impart it to us is when we get into here. And he starts to teach us these things. And he starts to show us these things. And we have a lot of wisdom written down 
uh, for us to be able uh, to read and to be able uh, to know. Now verse 8 says, the statutes of the Lord are what? What's the opposite of right? Wrong. Good. So they're not wrong, then they are right. And, and some of you are going to say left, weren't you? Okay, no, it's not left, Nadia. It's wrong. <laughs> right? Well, when you think about it, though, and it does, it does have an idea of being left. But when you think about it, we come into this mindset here, uh, again, that I have to question everything. I have to, I have, to have this, uh, uh, this, this, this critical view of all the information that I receive. And I think there, there is some truth in that. There's some wisdom in that, but not when it comes to the Word of God. I don't have to question if God's Word is right because it is right. And if I disagree with it, guess what? You're wrong. Exactly. I'm wrong. Thanks for telling me, Miss Jackie. I'm wrong. You know? And if Miss Jackie disagrees with it, she's wrong, right? That's, the, that's what it comes back to. God's word is right. Now, because it's right, what does it have then the ability to do? Rejoice my heart. Rejoice my heart. Uh, when, when, when you have an assurance that something is right, then we can be excited about it. We can rejoice in those things. Now, I think that that has a, a little bit of a description that kind of uh, overlaps the aspect of converting the soul. Because when I'm converting my emotions and I'm changing maybe the sadness into rejoicing, then that's the same thing that it says there God's word does because it is right. It rejoices the heart. Now, what happens when you're rejoicing? You're excited. You're encouraged. You're uplifted, right? What happens with the thing that rejoiced you? Does that make sense? I don't know if that's proper or not. The thing that made you rejoice. Do you want to just like hide it and never get back into it and keep it a keep it under wraps? No, you kind of want to bring that out in the open. You kind of want to get a little more of it. You kind of want to get into it and really get some uh, uh, more benefit from it because it rejoices the heart. Now, I think all of us uh, that have had any kind of time in God's Word, there's uh, there's. Uh, moments that we can point back to and say, wow, that was an encouraging study in God's word today. That was, that was something that rejoiced me, uh, that, that made my heart rejoice. And, and I'm grateful for what God has done through that. Now, uh, I can't encourage us uh, any more than what I just keep coming back to this aspect that we got to get into God's word. We've got to make this a priority. Now it says, the commandment of the Lord is what? Pure. There we go, pure. Verse 8, the commandment of the Lord is pure, pure. Now what's the opposite of pure? Impure. Okay, impure, good. <laughs> it's got something in it that it shouldn't be there. It's got something in it that has made it... Uh, uh, detrimental to uh, your health. Uh, it, it's kind of like having water. Uh, how, if you had pure water and you have impure water, chances are good. You're not very interested in drinking that impure water. Now, you may use the impure water to wash your car because as soon as it touches your car, it's going to become impure anyways. But you're not going to put that inside of you, right? Right. And why? Well, because it has some things in it that are going to be detrimental to my health. And so the, the, this is the aspect, again, of the Word of God because it's, it's all of these things and it's pure. Then we know that it is every, everything in it is what I need or will benefit me. And nothing, it has nothing that will be to my detriment. Now, because it's pure, what does it do? It enlightens the eyes. It enlightens the eye. Now, we talk about this aspect of having a light in the body. Matthew uh, chapter 5, I think, describes a little bit of that, uh, of, of how we see the light is the, uh, the eyes are the light of the body. And when the eyes are darkened, man, something's not right. When there's light there, then that's demonstrating a pureness of heart. 
And you can actually visibly see that in people's lives. Uh, uh, it's kind of an amazing thought or amazing principle, but you look into somebody's eyes and you should be able to see some light there. And if there's no light there, then there's probably a good chance that they're in some things that they shouldn't be into. Why? Well, because it's God's word that enlightens our eyes. It brings light to the body. It brings a shining forth and it's visible. Now, it also is a, is a spiritual aspect of it as well, because when we think of being enlightened, uh, one of the things I think that really does uh, depict it well, is it 1015 already? Man, one of the things I think that, it does, that does depict it well is when you uh, get into uh, something that you really enjoy eating. Something you really enjoy eating. Uh, and, and I don't mean you enjoy it because it's healthy. I mean you enjoy it because you enjoy it. You know, like it's just really good tasting. Now, typically, when you do that, what happens to your face? <laughs> no, that's the opposite, right? That's when I eat something I don't like. That's when I eat something that's sour. You know, the old I... Uh, uh, the, the thing that us dads love to do with our boys is squirt the lemon juice in their mouth and see how much they can pucker up on it, you know? <laughs> you say, what do you know about that? Well, I know because my dad did it to me and I've done it to my boys, you know? And now I got a few, I don't know, one or two of them that comes back, Dad, can I have more? Oh, <laughs> uh, you just defeated the whole thing. No, <laughs> you know? When we eat something that we delight in, though, whoo, man, it's like, Wow, that's just good. And you can see it in the eyes. And that's why when somebody uh, uh, tastes something that you just made and you look at their face, right? And when you see a certain reaction, oh, you don't like it, do you? Oh, yeah, I like it. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> right, just stop lying right now. <laughs> Your face has already told me all about it, you know? Uh, now, here it is. Because the Word of God is pure, right? It enlightens the eyes. I get into it. It's like, wow. And you can see it in my face. It just brings that, that encouraging, uh, uplifting mindset that says, wow, this is good stuff. Now, this is the word of God. This is what we have at our fingertips. This is what we get to study. This is what we get to indulge into. This is what we get to prioritize. And it's all good for you and for me. Now he goes on. And he says, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Uh, that's uh, obviously not directly related to uh, the description of the Word of God. However, it's a big part of us studying the Scriptures and, and hearing uh, what God has stated and, and, and knowing that it is God's Word and fearing Him, then endures forever. And then the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. If I just sum that up, uh, 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 then, then utilize that statement uh, because it's perfect, because it's sure, because it's right, because it's clean, because it's pure, uh, then it's true and it's righteous all together. And, and I, I think that sometimes, uh, and I'm probably guilty of this uh, as much as anybody, but sometimes because we have such easy access to the Bible, we really don't have the great appreciation and admiration that we should for it. You know how sometimes when things are really difficult to get or very expensive uh, to purchase, um, there's, a, there's something that, we, that clicks within us that we just end up valuing it more, right? Or something that you can't put a price tag on. Uh, like, like, for instance, one of my children. I mean, I, I jokingly say that all my children are for sale. Just give me the right price, you know. But, but obviously, it's, it's just being a jo a just a joking because my children are very precious to me. I can't put a value. I can't put a dollar amount upon them. You know, the, the Word of God kind of should have, the Word of God should have uh, that same place in our heart. And just because we're so familiar or accustomed to being able to go to it at any time, in any way, in any place. We shouldn't let that take away from the value that this has. It's true and righteous altogether. And because it is true and righteous altogether, here's our encouragement in verse 10. More to be desired are they than gold. 
You know, what are they? Well, the law, the testimonies, the statutes, the commandments, the judgments. They, more to be desired are they than even gold. And, and what is the gold? The gold, when, when uh, we, we don't uh, utilize gold very often right now, right? Um, uh, probably very few of us have ever even seen gold. <laughs> Uh, but you think about it as far as the monetary value, uh, we do recognize what a $100 bill means. Uh, or, you know, a large check with lots of numbers on it. Or, you know, something in, in that sense. There is, there's value to that in, in our understanding uh, in, in the society that we live in. And yes, we, we fall into uh, that trap of sometimes going after it, wanting more of it. Uh, arranging our time and our life and our, our, um, our decisions based on how much we're going to get of it. And here, if, if I could just really instruct all of us today, we ought to have a greater desire for God's Word, for good intimate study, for instruction from these pages, for the time that I can spend each moment of the day or uh, the times of the day that I can spend in it, getting things out of it, I ought to desire that more than I desire somebody coming and handing me a million dollar check. Now I can say that with my mouth. It's almost a different thing to really feel that in my heart. But as we recognize the true validity and necessity of God's word, then I believe more and more that can come upon us to the point that we can honestly say, I'd rather have good time in the scriptures than a whole bunch of money. Now he says, yea, that much, uh, m than much fine gold. Uh, obviously, the finer the gold is, the more valuable it is. Sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. Uh, moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is what? Great reward. Great reward. Great, uh, reward. I want you to turn back to Psalm chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1. Now, that really helps put, put it into perspective there. Helps us to understand uh, some of the uh, aspects of it. And uh, we see here, in, in fact, you know what? Let's go, let's, instead of going to Psalms 1, let's go to Psalms 103. Okay, uh, maybe I'll, I'll cover Psalms 1 at another time. As, a, as we're trying to do here, I'd like to really kind of make this um, practical uh, for us, all right? But Psalms 103, and, and, and what do you do when you uh, study the Scriptures? And how do you uh, study those Scriptures? And how do you get those things... Um, how do you develop a meaningful devotion time? Uh, and we've talked about a few uh, aspects of things that we can utilize. Um, again, I, I was going to show you some more on that uh, eSword or uh, what's the what's whatever the computer version of it, my sword and eSword. Uh, hopefully, some of you have. Um, in fact, how many of you use that right now? Okay, just a, just a couple of you. All right, so uh, I would encourage you. I will I, I I will try to carve out the time next week to to, to do that to show that to you because it is a, a great resource and it's free, and um, that to me is you know one of the big blessings of it is free, um, but it can help enhance uh, your study. Now I don't know how many of you use computer to study with. Um, you know, sometimes the computers and the phones can get a little too distracting when you study. And if it is that way for you, then I would kind of recommend not to uh, use that, or at least not to use it at first, get into it uh, at the beginning and, and, and use some pen and paper or something that's not going to be a uh, distraction for you. Uh, but one of the resources uh, that, or one of the reasons that it is a great resource is to help really enhance the study and learning more uh, regards of what is being specifically stated in the scriptures. I think all of us probably can agree we've gotten to places in the Bible we've read and we just I have no idea what that means. I do not understand it. 
it is not clicking for me. Uh, and uh, I t trust me, I there's times that I want to just call my dad up and say, Dad, what in the world does this mean? You know, like, can you give me some insight into that? Because now I know he has got a perfect understanding of the scriptures, you know. Uh, and, and so, but that's where this study comes in. So let's, let, let's just pretend for a moment here. Not, we don't have to pretend. We'll just do it. But let's just say we are sitting down to study this passage of Scripture. Okay? And uh, uh, the ways that we de determine uh, what passage to study can vary so much. Uh, I encourage you a lot of times uh, just to get into a specific book of the Bible and then just work through that book of the Bible. Uh, that way you don't have to spend 20 minutes of your you know, devotion time trying to figure out where to devote or trying to figure out what to read. Uh, you just know straight, I'm gonna get right into this and the Lord's gonna speak to me, give it to me. Now, it doesn't mean the Lord might not say, hey, I know you're in the book of 2 Corinthians, but today I need to, I need to bring you over to this uh, passage of scripture. And so I want you to study this particular chapter in the book of Psalms today and, and be sensitive to that. Uh, one of the things I encourage often is to pray about it, uh, to really seek the, the Spirit of God about it, because that helps us to develop a couple of things. First of all, it puts us where God wants us to be, but second of all, it teaches us to listen to uh, the Spirit of God. And uh, sometimes I think if we just need a little help or a little direction, that's okay as well. You know, uh, Pastor, just give me a book. I, I need a book. Or uh, some of you wives can ask your husbands, Husbands, husband, let me, tell me where should I study today? And, uh, or what should I, what book should I get started to? He's going to go, I don't know. You study wherever you want to study, you know? No, uh, let him uh, help uh, uh, direct you in that sense if that's a, a way. And children, the same thing. Maybe mom and dad can help you uh, to point you in a certain book. But ultimately, we want to get to the point where we, we, we can sense from the Spirit of God where he wants us to study. And so we get into that. I, I, I encourage, you know, at least a half an hour uh, 45 minutes is probably even better, and, and then uh, obviously uh, as you uh, grow and mature, that's not going to be enough. You're going to need a little bit more uh, of that study. I also think that it's good to kind of mix up throughout the day the Word of God, uh, listen to it maybe some, uh, quote or memorize, uh, uh, meditate on it some, uh, read uh, maybe short uh, passage, but then also have that that time where you're studying and you're going through it. So if this is our specific study and uh, we are at a deadline of 10.30, uh, which we are today, we have four minutes left to, to get through this. So obviously, we're not going to make it very far uh, in four minutes, but we would take this and we would say, okay, Psalms 103, that's the chapter the Lord wants me to uh, uh, study today. And uh, so what am I going to do? Somebody give me some ideas. What's one of the first things that I should do? Okay, read it is a great is a great place to start. I'm gonna back up just a moment from that though. First thing I should do is pray. First thing I should do is ask the Lord: Is there any sin in my heart that needs to be revealed to me? Lord, help me to see that. Help me to know that. Uh, and then, Lord, I'd, I'd like for you to to speak to me today. Share with me the truths that I need to learn. Help me to understand. Help me to have some things to apply. Lord, just lead me as I study through this. Communicate with me. Now, by doing that, I'm already now um, anticipating that God is going to work and that God's going to speak. And so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm already in the right mindset. So as I'm reading through this, now I'm going to look, okay, I'm listening, Lord, what are you saying? Now, if I don't do that, and let's just say this, oh, man, I'm running out of time. i got to read. Uh, okay, let me just read. Uh, Make a joyful noise in the Lord, serve the Lord of God. Amen, all right, all right read my, I read my scripture. Let's go. No, I just read it. That's all I did. Check the box. But I want to hear something. I want to know something from the Lord, all right? So, Lord, speak to my heart. Speak to me. Show me. Demonstrate what's... Uh, uh, what you need to in my life so that I'll know and so I don't understand these things. So then I get into it and I go, bless the Lord on my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And then I read the other 20 verses and then bless the Lord, all his works in all places, his dominion, bless the Lord on my soul. So I just read the entire chapter. Now, I don't read that fast. You don't either. But uh, when you're out of time, you're out of time. So uh, uh, you read through that chapter. Now, what happens when you read a chapter? Do you always get it? 
Have you ever found yourself four verses into the chapter thinking about something else? <laughs> and then another eight verses later, you come back, oh, we're reading right here. I don't know, some of you going, Pastor, I don't do that. I'm a lot more spiritual than that. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when we get into the genealogies, we just press play and then uh, go do the dishes, right? Uh, but when we, when we get into this, we, okay, so I'm going to read it, but then there's probably a good chance I need to reread it. And then maybe I might need to read it again. But then at some point, I got to kind of stop and start breaking it down. So then I may read a few passages or a few of the verses and start to understand a little bit. Okay, so now I've got the overall concept here. And, and by the way, it, it's always helpful to know the book you're in and to know some of the settings kind of behind it. Uh, that's, that's always a big thing. And it's 1030. I'm going to have to stop. All right. Uh, that's not where you stop your study at, though. Uh, but we will, we will try to emphasize the, a little bit more some of those steps. And I'm sorry that I ran out of time this morning on that. Uh, but let, let's, hey, get that much down, all right? Pray and ask the Lord and, and read through it several times. Commercial for FBI is a great way to learn the context. Exactly, it is. It's a good chronological way to study the Bible, and it helps put you in the context of where you're at. It helps if you, sometimes if you can't study undistracted, read it out loud as if you were reading it to somebody. Yep. I guarantee you, you'll start to think about it. That's a good way, too, yep. Just make sure that there's not somebody else out there that thinks you're going, oh, no. All right. The Word of God, though, it's valuable, it's important, it's a necessity for our life. Your spiritual growth depends and is measured by how much you're in this book.